Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be continuing with the design of this smaller scale RC chassis I'm calling the FFR SC1. In the previous video I discussed the requirements and the plans I had for this chassis and began designing the rear section of it. Now I'm going to be picking up where I left off in that last video by completing the design and printing out the first prototype. If you haven't yet watched the first video, I'd recommend doing so before watching this one. I'll be sure to include a link to it below in the description. I started off by modeling a motor mount which will hold a RF-130CH motor. I will be designing other motor mounts in the future for different kinds and sizes of motors, but I decided to start with a RF-130CH due to its size, low cost, and power. I started by designing the gears. Fusion 360 has a decent spur gear generator built in, which is what I used here. You can access it by clicking on File, and then Scripts and Add-ons, and then selecting Spur Gear. I chose to create these small six-tooth gears because they will be easier to print as opposed to a gear with much finer teeth. Because each gear has six teeth, there will be no gear reduction, which is fine since this motor has plenty of torque. The main purpose of these gears is to drop the position of the output shaft, so that the drive shaft is closer to being level with the rear axle. The overall design is going to look quite similar to the motor mount I'm using on the Firebird build. After positioning each of the gears, I created a body that will represent a small bearing that will support the lower gear. After that, I created a shaft that will run through the center of the gear. I then began sketching the profile that I will extrude from to create the main section of the mount. I projected elements such as the holes for the bolts and the bearing and based my design around these elements. Some things that I'm keeping in mind is to make sure there's plenty of room around the gears to avoid a collision and to think about where I want to place the screw holes which will be used to secure the mount to the chassis. Once the sketch is complete, I begin extruding elements from it. I was a bit concerned about the bearing being too close to the motor, so I moved it and both the gears back a little bit to eliminate this risk. I imported a drive shaft socket that will be mounted to the output shaft. With the front section of the mount complete, I begin working on the back. This back section will need to be a separate piece so that the lower gear and bearings can be easily installed and removed if necessary. Here I'm creating a body that will represent a 2 by 5 by 2 millimeter bearing, which will be placed on the back side of the lower gear. With the bearing in place, I begin designing the back piece of the motor mount. Yeah. 
bottom will have four screw holes so that it can be securely mounted to the chassis. I now needed to create some screw holes so that the back half of the motor mount can be secured to the front half. And that concludes the design of this motor mount. I now have a way to mount the motor to the chassis and a lower height of the output shaft. I transferred the motor mount assembly and a pre-existing suspension and steering assembly I had previously designed into the project. Using these imported components as references, I can now begin to design the front section of the chassis. One thing that I noticed is that the bottom of the front suspension assembly is set several millimeters lower than the rear axle. To help compensate for this, I dropped the height of the center section of the chassis one millimeter. I then started sketching the shape and position of all the holes for the front part of the chassis. Some things I was keeping in mind was to make sure that there is plenty of clearance for when the front tires are turned and that there is room for the drive shaft and torque arm. I then extruded from the sketch, combining it with the rest of the chassis. Next, I needed to design a very simple torque arm mount that is compact and can easily be mounted. Once completed, I imported this assembly and positioned it onto the chassis. I also imported a 2.2 gram servo placeholder and figured out where I wanted to place it. Once I figured out where I wanted to position the steering servo, I modeled some simple mounts that will secure it. After making a few minor adjustments, I mirrored the object. I now needed to mark the position of where all the holes will be for both the steering servo mounts and the torque arm mount. I projected the holes onto the sketch, and I then mirrored all the holes so that either component can be mounted on the left or right side. Next, I needed to make a piece that will essentially be a spacer between the chassis and the front suspension assembly. 
I had an idea to create an optional mount for the ESC that places it in front of the motor. Making it a part of the spacer piece really wouldn't work though because it would get in the way of the steering linkage, so I needed to modify the suspension assembly to be able to incorporate this ESC mount. With this modification made, I can now secure a flat piece to the front, which could be used to mount the ESC. With a bit more additional work, an enclosure could be designed to fit the front, which could be made to look like a radiator. I returned to this design the next day and decided to change the thickness of the main section to make it a bit more rigid. I also shorten the back section as it's currently too long for the vehicles that I will be using this chassis for. I will design several different sizes of this rear piece to fit different bodies. After lowering it down a tad, I wanted to create a separate piece that resembles a trunk pan, which could be used to store the battery or receiver. I started by sketching a side profile and then extruding it symmetrically. Next I made a cut so that the lower section is now a separate piece, and then used a shell command to make the walls of the part 1mm thick. After going back in the timeline to shorten the previous extrusion, I then made some mounts so that this piece can be attached to the rest of the chassis. Another thing I decided to change was to increase the length of the screw holes that connects the different sections of the chassis together. For the screws in the back, I needed to create a cylinder and combine it with the rear section to make sure that there is enough wall thickness around the screw holes. I also created some screw holes around the center of the axle housing, where limiting straps which would prevent the axle from dropping too far can be placed if desired. The chassis was now at a stage where I was ready to print the first prototype. I imported the three main pieces into Simplify 3D, which is what I will be using to slice the models and create a G-code file for the printer to read. I positioned each model so that it had a flat surface sitting on the bed, and I added a lot of support material to the overhangs. 
I did a quick check to make sure that the parts would be printed how I wanted them, and then I began printing each of the parts. Here's a look at the printed parts. They looked great, though there was still a lot of support material attached to the main piece which needed to be removed. I used a high percentage of infill for the supports to improve the quality of the finished part, however doing this makes the support a bit more difficult to remove. I carefully used some side cutters to peel away all of the support structure. After removing all of the support structure, I began boring all of the holes with an appropriate size drill bit. I also cleaned up a few sections with a knife. I then secured each part using screws. The completed chassis looks great and feels relatively solid. I adjusted the dimensions of this chassis so that it would fit this 125th scale Camaro. The fitment seems nearly perfect, though I might need to shorten the length of the rear piece just a little bit. After printing out this first prototype, there were immediately a few things that I wanted to modify. The first being the thickness of this section of the chassis. It seemed to be the most flexible section, so I figured thickening it a bit would help to stiffen it. The second thing I did was increase the screw hole size so that slightly larger screws could be used. I also lowered these tabs down a bit as well. I'm looking forward to continuing building and experimenting with this platform. I'll be continuing to include updates on this chassis and the builds that are utilizing it in future videos. I've also got some more speed modeling videos in the works, which I will be uploading in the coming weeks. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.